I'm going to skip the spine temporarily because we're going to use the built-in XSI quaternion spine rather than a series of bones. It's going to give us a bit more flexibility uh, for the character uh, and it requires just a slightly different setup. So I'm going to finish off some of the other bones that I'd be drawing in the right view, namely the neck and head chain. So I'll start with that. So in the right side view, again this has a this character has a fairly long neck and if you look at the shoulders, the shoulder pad comes up quite high in the in the side view kind of blocking uh, the pivot line of the neck so we're going to make sure that we landmark the start of the neck just below that shoulder. You can actually see the clavicle line coming in right about right about here. Um, so I'll place the bone right about like so and the character has a fairly long neck. We could, uh, could probably use a two bone neck chain if we wanted to just to give ourselves a bit of extra flexibility and I'm going to end the neck right around the jawline of this character. Now, fantasy characters or kind of non-human creatures, uh, it's a little bit more difficult to place the bones because there's no real world um, equivalent of the character, but we're just going to kind of guess, rough it out. So I'm going to do a three bone uh, neck and head chain here. So again, these are all forward kinematics. We're not going to be using inverse kinematics to animate the head. So uh, the more bones in the chain aren't going to really cause any sort of problems. Again, when you look at the chains though, notice that all of the rotational values we've used are on the z-axis, the local z-axis. I'll also add in a jaw bone. And for this character, normally I use a, a one bone jaw, but for this character I can get away with using a two bone jaw. Again, it's not quite a a human character so it doesn't necessarily have to behave the same way that humans do. Um, normally uh, just below our earlobe there's a little pressure point that really makes a good pivot point for the jaw but the character's ear is up here and that's not going to really work so I'm just going to use the line of the mandible or the jaw and I'm going to start a pivot just underneath the ear about here and I'm going to use one longer bone to represent most of the jaw itself and then just an extra little bone here in case I need to do some some tweaks on the jaw. So that makes up the chains of the neck and head and of the jaw bone. And there's one other bone I'm going to place in here. When we create the spine, uh, we're really just creating the effect that we want from about the point where the, the hip, the pelvis starts up until the point where the rib cage takes over. The rib cage is a very rigid area right around here that doesn't really need a lot of deformation. It's more the f sort of the fatty area of the belly that's going to be deforming. So I'm going to use a one bone chain to represent the rib cage area. And if we look on the character, uh, we can kind of see the hint of some rib lines right about here. So this is the soft part of the belly. We'd want the rib to start right about at this point here. So I can landmark it in the right view, but just checking out what's happening in the front view. If I need to, I can zoom in a little bit closer to see where that point is placed. So we'll start right about there. Would work pretty well for me. Maybe a little higher. We'll go up something like that. So a one bone chain to represent that rib cage area. Now it's only a single pivot. We're going to have to fix that up. Um, but it'll work for this base skeleton we're creating. We're going to be layering a lot of additional stuff on top of this simple simple skeleton. So let's just double check in the right view if there's anything else we need to build. I think, I think it looks pretty good. There's an optional bone you can add in for the, the cheek of the character, but I'm going to show you some alternative ways of, of supporting that geometry when we do flex the leg. So that takes care of the right side view.